Witness by Karen Hess The Characters Leonora Sutter, aged 12 Sarah Chickering, aged 42, a farmer Purcell Johnson, town constable, aged 66 Fitzgerald Flitt, doctor, aged 60 Harvey Pettibone, shop owner, husband of Viola, aged mid-fifties. Merlin von Turnhout, aged 18. Esther Hirsch, aged 6. Johnny Reeves, clergyman, aged 36. Iris Weaver, restaurant owner and rum runner, aged 30. Viola Pettibone, shop owner, aged mid-fifties. And Reynard Alexander, newspaper editor, aged 48. Setting, Vermont Time, 1924, Act 1 Leonora Sutter I don't know how Miss Harvey talked me into dancing in the Fountain of Youth. I don't know how she knew I danced at all. Unless, once, a long time ago, my mamma told her so. But she did talk me into dancing. <laughs> I leapt and swept my way through the fountain of youth separated on the stage from all those limb-tight white girls, the ones who wouldn't dance with a negro. They went home in a huff that first day, but some came back. They told Miss Harvey they'd dance, but they wouldn't touch any brown-skinned girl. Only the little girl from New York, Esther, that funny-looking kid, only Esther didn't mind about me being coloured. Merlin von Tenhout. I pushed the window up in school to get the stink of Leonora Sutter out of the classroom when Miss Harvey brought her to show off a dance from last week's recital. Mr Caldwell chuffed his arms and faked a shiver, ramped the sash back down, saying the day was too cold to leave a window open. Leonora Sutter turned and stared through me. Ugh, that witchy girl with those fuming eyes. She meant to put a curse on me. She meant to. I left school right then. No amount of air will get the smell of her out of my nose. The soot of her out of my eyes. Esther Hirsch I did first meet Sarah Chickering when I had Cummings here last year to be a fresh air girl in Vermont. Vermont is a nice place. They have wigglefish. That is what I did tell Daddy in New York when I had Cummings back to him. I did ask Daddy to have our livings in Vermont with Sarah Chickering for keeps. But Daddy did say no. <laughs> so I made a long walk all by myself. I did follow the train tracks, and pretty quick, Dad, Daddy did have comings after me. Sarah Chickering made two rooms to be for us, in her big farmhouse, with her dog Jerry. We have sitting every night at the round table, next to the hot stove, and I do catch the wigglefish through a hole Sarah Chickering does make in the ice. Daddy gives help when Sarah Chickering has needs for extra big hands. But Daddy is a shoe man. He has shoe knowings. My friend, Sarah Chickering, she has knowings of all things else. Leonora Sutter In school, Willie Pettibone handed me an article, torn from the town paper. It said, Any person to whom an evening of hearty laughter is poison had better keep away from the community club minstrel show Friday evening at the town hall. All others will be admitted for a night of fun brought to you by twenty-two genuine black-faced coons. I felt like skidding on ice as I read. I felt like twisting steel. Why can't folks just leave me alone? Daddy says, How alone you want to be, Leonora? You're already nothing but a wild brown island. Purcell Johnson Roads were bad. Don't blame me. It's not my fault. These roads are nothing but hog wallow during a thaw. Folks ought to know that. Right Sutter should have thought before bringing his wife and child along to town with him. It wasn't my fault. His horse and wagon miring down, stuck in the mud. I wasn't even on duty. Not my fault he couldn't get help. No one too energetic about helping a coloured man hereabouts, even if he is a neighbour. Sutter, making deliveries, left his womenfolk in the wagon too long. Wife took a chill, waiting. 
she put her wrap around the little girl, Leonora. Sick all year, Sutter's wife was, Doc Flint said she ought to go away to a sanatorium to get her health back. Right Sutter didn't have money for that, even if there was a sanatorium for coloured folk. The Sutter woman died this past spring. <laughs> Don't blame me, the roads were bad. Esther Hirsch The preacher man, Johnny Reeves, did have sittings on the river bank where I do make the leaves and twigs float by in the ice-green water. Even with my hat down over my ears, I did hear him cry, Neighbour, oh neighbour! So I made my way to see what he did want. Johnny Reeves did stand when he had seeings of me, and a girl did stand up in the brown tangle bank beside him and run away, and Johnny Reeves did, did yell and make fist shakings at me, and I did yell and make fist shakings back, and we had a good game of yellings and shakings. Until Sarah Chickering did call me and I had runnings back to the house to gather the warm chicken eggs from the steamy straw nests. Leonora, I shouldn't let them get to me, but I'm f Get them some warmth on a cold day. You'd be cheap fuel, they said. They liked the smell of barbecue, they said. I turned my back on Willie Pettibone and walked out of school. I didn't know where I was going. I just walked out, without my coat, without my hat or rubbers. I didn't feel the cold. I was that scorched. Sarah Chickering. The day was cold, bitter, below zero. Made you wish you'd been born inside a fur coat cold. Heavy sky, early dark. Lamps already lit, Esther playing in the kitchen with her clothespin dolls, and Mr. Hirsch still at the shoe store. That's when Leonora Sutter, half frozen, showed up on my porch. She wore no coat, her head was bare, no rubbers on her feet, nothing but worn thin school clothes standing between her and the teeth of winter. I brought her in, sat her on a chair by the stove, put a mug, the chipped one, of warm broth in her hands. Esther dragged my best quilt into the kitchen and worked it up over Leonora's shoulders. Only Esther would go lugging out the company best for a coloured girl. I left Leonora there with Esther, ran the half mile to Iris Weaver's restaurant with the coffee flowing and the politics raging around me, phoned Doc Flint and Constable Johnson, let them know I had Leonora and she wasn't in any too good shape, and they'd better hurry along. Constable Johnson said he'd go after the girl's father, make sure Wright Sutter got his child home safe and sound, to that little place they rent from Lizzie Stockwell out the west end of town. Constable said he didn't want happening to Laura what happened to the mother. When I got back to the house, Esther sat at Leonora's feet, Little round Esther, leaning against that slender brown girl, with her long head and longer limbs, gave me some turn. Seeing those two motherless children in my kitchen, before the stove, Esther's hair draped across Leonora's lap, Leonora's dark hand stroking Esther's silk face. After Wright Sutter drove away with Leonora, I looked at the empty chair by the stove, the quilt still slung over it, spilling onto the floor. I never had a coloured girl in my kitchen before. Leonora Sutter. I told Daddy I wasn't going back to school. Daddy said, of course you are. No low-down white boy is going to stop Leonora Sutter from getting an education. Johnny Reeves. Some preacher down south has himself a following of coloureds and whites together. They'd trail after him from town to town, forgetting their duties to home. They even tried him, neighbour, they tried him, before a ju jury of white men, for inciting trouble, for leading the Lord's sheep to stray. But still, neighbour, it grieves me to tell you that still they let the devil go free. It's a sorry state, neighbour. It's a pitiful state of affairs when a coloured preacher can lure good white folk from their hearths. Leonora Sutter. 
My daddy says, down in Texas, a reverend by the name of Revealed Jesus is preaching so powerful, people are leaving their jobs and their homes and following him from meeting to meeting. My daddy says, Revealed Jesus better get his brave behind up north pretty quick because what he's doing down there in Texas is sure to get him lynched. Johnny Reeves Oh neighbour, down in that den of the devil, down in the centre of sin, down in the New York Harlem, Negroes kill other Negroes over gambling debts, over women, over gin. Hear me neighbour, if we are patient, if we are patient my good neighbour, we can stay here at home. We can take care of our problems at home. And down there in Harlem, the Negro problem will settle itself. Esther Hirsch In New York, I did see someone whose poor head did have a bullet inside it, and he did have blood everywhere in the street where he did sleep so still. Daddy and Sarah Chickering did talk at the table. A man with the name of Senator Green did get a bullet in his head too. I did make a whisper sound to hear this talk, like birds falling. Daddy did so. Don't cry, Esther. Senator Green is getting better again. Daddy says bullets are a very bad thing. But Daddy says sometimes you can even get a shooting in the head and still be okay. Sarah Chickering did say, yes, that is true. So it has to be. Purcell Johnson The Ku Klux Klan is looking to rent the town hall for their meetings. Why shouldn't they? Iris Weaver Some girls I know have gone out in the world, but most have married, settled down to children and housework. I'm different. I have this restaurant. I have a secret life too. A life the law is forever dogging me over. I run booze. I know every foot of ground between Boston and Montreal. I could walk the distance blindfolded. I know the names of the customs officers, American and Canadian, where they're stationed, what shift they're on, the tough ones, and the ones who can't resist a pretty leg or a slice of apple pie. The officers in Vermont are the toughest. I've brought loads through Highgate and Allsburg, but mostly I go through New York. Rouses Point and Plattsburgh. I drive a good second-hand Packard. It has plenty of pep plenty of room to carry a load, and it's got damn good springs. Johnny Reeves Have you seen the way the girls dance? Sinful neighbour, sinful. These girls, doing the unspeakable gyrations of Satan, with each step they unravel the moral fibre of our country. They must be stopped. Not by law, neighbour, not by legislation. This is no business of the government. It is up to us, neighbour, it is up to us to lock our daughters in until they learn to behave, until we destroy in them the wanton will of Satan. Fitzgerald Flit The flapper is not the least bit alarming, nor a sign of the declining social standard. Though she drinks cocktails and shows an inordinate fondness for lipstick and the rouge pot, we have nothing to fear. I doctor these women, and I have seen over the last years a transformation in them, and what I see, the opening of roses, kept bud tight so many years, it warms this ageing soul. Sarah Chickering They say maple sugar is becoming as old-fashioned as the paisley shawl. But to see Esther Hirsch suck on a lump, her far face star blissed with sweet delight, I think that old-time maple, it's still all right.